Good morning, Living Hope. It's Wednesday morning. God bless you this morning. I'm happy you're here with me today for another edition of Living Hope Today. We're going to have a great time in God's Word today. There's a lot to cover, so we're going to get right to it. I just want you to think about this with me for a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I was watching a pastor on a YouTube video. He was interviewing a Satanist, uh, a person who worships the devil. And he said, can you summarize the, the Satanic Bible up for me in just a little phrase or two? And the man looked at the pastor and said, well, the basic philosophy we hold to is that we should do what we want. And I thought, man, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Because aren't we trained as Americans to do what we want? We've been told we have freedom, and that means we have the freedom to do whatever we want, whenever we want, just because we want, right? We get to decide what's right and wrong. We get to live our lives the way we choose. Just do what you want. What kind of rights do we have? You know, in the Bible, we see that... This is not an uncommon thing for people to think they have the right to do whatever they want. If you remember in Judges, the book of Judges is kind of a chaotic book. Israel isn't really walking with God like they should. They've, they've gone their own way. And in the process, by the time you get to the last verse of the book, that's where we are, Judges 21, 25. It says, in, there, in those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. That's where we live today, right? Everybody thinks they have the right to decide what their morality should be, what they want to do in life. It, it should be unimpeded. It's their choice and their way. You know, but God says a few things about this attitude that you and I need to explore today. One thing he says is, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. God says to me, listen, and he says to you, listen, you guys might think you're doing what you want to do and that you have rights and that you should be okay no matter how you choose to live. But even though that might seem right to you, that's the way that leads to death. As God instructs us in Scripture, He is the highest authority, and we are His creatures. He has created us, and we are accountable to Him. That's what His Word says. In fact, when we think we can do whatever we want, the Bible is full of passages after passage like this. Look at this. It says, in Ephesians, when Paul writes that church, he says, For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, that is an idolater. Think about idolatry, right? What is that? That's when you and I decide that we can be our own gods, or we take something other than God and start worshiping that, even if that means we worship ourselves. Ourself. Anyone who is covetous, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. And then he adds to that. Look at this. He says, let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. In other words, God is going to respond fully. He is going to pour out his judgment against sin that idea that we have the right to do whatever we want to do just because it's our way and we've decided that's the way we want to live, that's a deception. God says, look, I am the moral authority of the universe and you are accountable to me. And my goal for all of you is to live with me in holiness and purity in the original way I've created my creation, you and I have never experienced that. We didn't get to live in the Garden of Eden, but God says, look, there's a much higher way, a much better calling, and I'm going to get you there if you'll come to me by faith. So you and I as a believer, you and I as people that have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior and 
we endeavor every day to abide in him and follow him, what does God say to us? What are we to focus on? Look at how Jesus says this in Matthew 7. He says, first, look, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Really? So it's not enough to just say, well, I, I guess Jesus is okay with me. He's Lord, and I'm still going to do whatever I want, and he's still not going to have any place in terms of determining the direction of my life. But yeah, okay, Jesus is Lord. Cool, no problem. Jesus says, what? He says, <laughs> look, you can call me Lord if you want to. That doesn't mean you're going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, then what do we have to do to enter the kingdom of heaven? What does he say? He says, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Ah, ah, okay. So let's go back to the beginning of this. You want to follow what the Satanist says and live for yourself? Do what you want? That's a way of deception. That's a way that leads to a very bad end, separated from God. But if you decide to do what Jesus says here, to live your life, to do what God wants, whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, we're the ones that are going to enter his kingdom through Jesus Christ. So today... It's Wednesday. You're going to work. You get to decide how you're going to spend your time, how you're going to spend your money, what you're going to do with your life today. We all get to decide that. God's encouragement to us through his word today is to look at what he wants us to do, to study his word, to pray, and to understand that to serve him isn't about just saying, oh yeah, Jesus is Lord, no problem. No, it's about making the conscious decision that we live our lives every day to do what he wants, not what we want. We're not free like that. We're free in him because we're forgiven. We're free in him. We'll experience eternity with him no matter what we have to suffer here and now. But the truth of God's word is, whoever does the will of my Father in heaven that's the one that's going to enter the kingdom. So if you've spent your life living for yourself, re-examine what your priorities are. In light of what Jesus has said, we should lay our rights down and say, God, we want to serve you and you alone. You are the Lord and the King of Kings. Uh, my name is Scott Kalavik. I pastor Living Hope Community Church. As most of you know, if you're watching today and you've never been to Living Hope, there's a website on your screen right now. You're certainly invited. Just go to welcometolivinghope.com and find the details out. We're at Montview and Peoria on Sunday mornings at 1030. We'd love to have you as our guest. Just come as you are. I also want to make you aware and remind you again that we do have a website called Are You a Disciple? R stands for Relationship with Jesus. U stands for Understanding His Word. And A stands for action. Are you a disciple? We want to be in relationship with Jesus. We want to understand what his word says. And we want to live authentically before him. You can go there and look at the study guides and lessons. It might help you grow in Christ or might help you disciple someone who wants to grow in Christ with you. I also want to just mention one more time that we will pray for you if you go to ipray.world and let us know how we can pray for you. We're here today to say what to God? God, forgive me for living for myself. Forgive me for putting my rights, or at least what I think my rights are, ahead of you. I want to worship you in spirit and in truth. I want to follow you. I want to lay down my rights so that I can do whatever you call me to do. That's the devotion of the day. God, help us live authentically before him by focusing all our efforts on accomplishing his will. I praise God for you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for another edition of Living Hope Today. Lord, we give you glory.